We previously proved this theorem connecting functional limits to sequential limits. Link in the description to that proof. It's a great result because we proved a lot of things in the past about sequential limits. So it's a really useful connection. Today I'm going to show you how we can use this sequential formulation of the limit of a function in order to determine that a function doesn't have a particular limit. The negation of the epsilon delta definition is kind of a pain to work with, and this sequential criteria can be a lot more practical. The idea is simply to take the contrapositive. The result that we proved was that the limit of f of x as x approaches c must equal l if and only if every sequence converging to c has a sequence of images under the function that converges to l. So the contrapositive is this. If there exist two sequences, an and bn, in, of course, the function's domain a, where an and bn both converge to that limit point c, that point that we're trying to let x approach, if both the sequences converge to c, but the limit of their images under the function are not the same, well then the limit of the function as x approaches c must not exist. Because if it did exist, then every sequence converging to C would have to have a limit of images that also converges to C. And so we couldn't possibly have two sequences like this with different limits. And again, this is just the contrapositive of this result that we already proved. If two sequences both converge to C, but the limit of their images under the function are not equal, then the limit of the function as x approaches C can't exist. Let's try using this. We're going to use this sequential criterion for the limit of a function not existing to show that the limit of sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0 does not exist. By inspection, we can see, well, hey, if x is getting super small, then 1 over x is getting really big, so this is just sign of infinity, effectively. It's clearly oscillating very quickly. But how do we show that this limit doesn't exist? We can do it quite easily by using this sequential criterion. If we can find two sequences in the domain of this function, which is the real numbers without zero, that's the domain, if we can find two sequences in the domain that converge to zero, but where the sequences of their images under the function do not have the same limits, then this limit must not exist. So here is the solution. The two sequences we're going to use are this sequence xn and this sequence yn. xn is 1 over 2 pi n, and yn is 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. You can see when we plug these into sine of 1 over x, we're going to get a bunch of zeros for xn and a bunch of ones for yn. Now clearly xn converges to 0 because as n goes to infinity, the denominator just gets really big and the numerator is simply 1. And yn also converges to 0 by the same exact logic. All right, so now let's look at the sequences of the images of these guys. So yes, we have two sequences that converge to zero, but what happens if we plug these sequences into the function? Well, the limit of f of the sequence xn is sine of one over the terms of the sequence xn, so one over one over two pi n. Now that's just going to become two pi n. So the limit of f of xn as n goes to infinity is the limit of sine of two pi n as n goes to infinity. And that's just zero because sine of two pi times anything is zero. But what happens with yn? Well, the limit of f of yn as n goes to infinity, we'll plug in yn and what we get is sine of one over the terms of yn, so this is just going to get flipped, and it becomes sine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Now, 2 pi is the period of sine, so the 2 pi n does not do anything at all. We can just get rid of it. So this is going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of pi over 2, which is obviously just 1. So the limits of the images of the sequences are not equal. One is equal to zero, one is equal to one. They're not equal, which shows this limit mustn't exist. 
If the limit as x approaches 0 of sine over 1 over x did exist, then no matter how we approach 0 in the domain, we should have the function approaching whatever its limit is. But we see that's not the case. If we approach in one manner, we have a limit of 0. In another manner, we have a limit of 1. So the limit doesn't exist. And that's how you can use this handy sequential criterion to show that the limit of a function doesn't exist. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And be sure sure to check out my Real Analysis course and Real Analysis Exercises playlists in the description. Thanks for watching.